There's something I realize. My understanding of Filipino cuisine would be incomplete without eating Filipino pastries and desserts. And so today I'm furthering my education at a bakery called Gwenny's. It's a famous local spot and a fixture of the Filipino community here in the DC area. So I'm excited. It's going to be good. Let's go. Gwenny's Pastries is the leading Filipino bakery in the Washington, D.C. area. There is no denying that, and in fact, there is really no competition. Their baked goods and uh, pastries are found in every Filipino grocery in the D.C. area. And uh, despite being called Gwenny's Pastries, I mean, they do far more than just pastries. I mean, if you can think of anything that's baked, they do it pretty much. And uh, this place is run by Stella Fernandez. She is the sister of Javier Fernandez, uh, the chef behind Lapu Lapu. And I did an episode on Lapu Lapu, the breakfast sandwich place. They serve a Filipino breakfast sandwiches. So uh, please catch that episode if you haven't already done so. But uh, Gwenny's Pastries, uh, and Gwenny's is, uh, I think, the mother of Stella and Javier. Okay, this first item uh, is Chopau. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. It basically is a, a chasu bao, basically, a kind of a Filipino style uh, pork bun. It reminds me very much of the Chinese uh, uh, roast pork bun. And there's pork inside. I was told that there is pork asado inside this, uh, this bread, or this bao. And so uh, let me try it. It's called Chopau. <laughs> wow. Mmm. Wow. Wow, that's good. The top and the bottom of this bun is dusted with some sort of, uh, looks like cornmeal. So it has a, a dusty uh, feel to it. And, uh, let, well, let me, let me just taste the, the filling again. Wow. Wow. It's a very smooth, very tender pork asado filling. Yeah, the, the pork has a slight savoriness and a, and a slight sweetness. I would say the sweetness probably is a tad more pronounced than the, the savoriness of it, but it's shredded. I mean, think of the most lush pulled pork you've ever had. The bun itself, it is so delicately soft. Yeah, there's some egg white and, and a bit of yolky material in here. Wow. Wow. Okay, next up are the Hopia. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, H-O-P-I-A. And uh, at uh, Gwenny's, there was two choices. The Hopia with pork inside, uh, a Hopia with uh, mung beans inside. I think the mung bean one was uh, sweet. And I asked the young lady who was helping me which one uh, I should get. And she clearly stated <laughs> that the hopia with the pork filling was the better option. That was the one she preferred, actually. Uh, hopia Boy, I think that's what it's called. Uh, and basically, they look like little, they look a, a lot like mooncakes in terms of the uh, external, exterior uh, characteristic of these, uh, of these pastries. They have that kind of flaky, 
exterior like a moon cake almost uh, but they're not shaped like moon cakes and uh, so yeah it's it's a kind of uh, a domey <laughs> looking pastry with pork inside I've never had this before Wow mmm Wow it's not what I expected and by that I mean that I was expecting like pieces of pork distinguishable pieces of pork to be present on the inside but it's just it's white and flaky on the inside so it's hard to tell where that pork filling is Wow there definitely is a, a filling and it's kind of sweet really Wow, that's the most unusual pork I've ever had. It's really good actually. That filling is lush and smooth and creamy and it's pork. I mean, I'm looking at the label. It is certainly labeled Hopia Baboy, which is pork, right? Wow. Okay, if this is a pork filling, this is this is remarkable. It, it reminds me of like, like like lotus paste or something like that. But this just looks like some sort of lush lotus paste or something. Is this really pork? Wow. Wow. It has that sort of same kind of uh, consistency about it. Like you would see in a moon cake. Basically, this is a moon cake made out of pork. <laughs> wow. Okay, this next item is perhaps Gwenny's most famous item. It is the Ube Cheesecake. And uh, this is very well known and very popular. And uh, I'm looking down on it. It has a uh, very deep purple color. Something of a cakey looking brown uh, top layer. And it looks like some sort of uh, maybe a graham cracker type crust on the bottom. I don't know. I'm not that familiar with uh, cheesecakes. Uh, in fact, I haven't had a cheesecake uh, in a long time and there's a kind of a light purple uh, flower type of frosting on top of this uh, ube cheesecake slice. Oh, let me, oh, here it is. Let me try it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let me, let me get another, oh, another uh, little piece off this slice. Wow. Oh my, oh my, that is delicious. It has a very uh, recognizable kind of ube flavor. And uh, you know, when you're eating cheesecake, I mean, you want your cheesecake texture to be very smooth. And this is, uh, my cheesecake experiences has been with uh, the quote unquote uh, New York style cheesecake. That is kind of firm, uh, you know, firm but smooth. You know, it kind of walks that uh, kind of paradoxical line. Uh, and this one is really smooth and, uh, you know, with a touch of creaminess and kind of a frothiness and lightness and airiness. Uh, you know, all those things would be accurate. Uh, I would say that this is lighter and less firm than the traditional, like, New York-style cheesecakes that I've had in the past. I haven't had one in a long time. And you know, how traditional is this in, in terms of it being a Filipino uh, a dessert? I don't know. Uh, is cheesecake eaten in the Philippines? Uh, or is this some sort of uh, Gwenny's uh, uh, invention? Uh, I, I don't know. All I know is it's really delicious. Okay, the next item up is the uh, B-I-K-O, Biko. And uh, it, it looks like a big slab of glutinous rice. I think it's made out of glutinous rice and flavored with coconut milk and maybe uh, some vanilla. And uh, it looks really, it looks really dense. Let me just touch it. Ooh, it is very dense. I think I'm gonna need the knife. I'm gonna use my plastic knife into and to break off a piece and then poke it with my fork. Ooh, I took off a piece from the uh, the caramelized uh, side of it. Uh, one side is a little bit more brown than the other. Ooh. 
Wow. Mmm. Wow. Wow. I mean, I can actually feel the grains of rice as I'm chewing on it. And so you get that grainy kind of flavor from the from the rice itself. And then in the in the background, there is that vanilla slash coconut interplay that's kind of dancing on your tongue on top of the rice. And so it's not perfectly smooth. There is a kind of graininess. OK, this next piece, I'm going to break off with the the teeth of this fork. Uh, ooh, ooh, here's a nice caramelized piece. Yeah, wow. Wow, that's good. And I like that it's not perfectly smooth. I've had glutinous rice desserts before, you know, in the Chinese tradition, but this is the first time eating biko, and this is this is making an impression on me. This is really a very, very delicious preparation. Okay, the next item is uh, a combo box item, actually. There's a combination of puto and uh, kutsinta. It's a uh, circular glutinous rice uh, dessert, and it has a brown color, kusinta, and I think it's the brown sugar that's making it brown. And the puto uh, are rice cakes, steamed rice cakes, made from rice flour, I imagine. And uh, they come in three colors, purple, yellow, and white. And the purple one, obviously, is ube. Uh, the yellow one, I'm not sure. And the white one, uh, I, I don't know, coconut? And the yellow one is maybe, what, mango? I don't know. Let me, uh, uh, ooh, I was going to pick up my fork, but maybe, maybe you eat uh, puto with your hand. Uh, if it's not the case, forgive me, but I'm going to grab this, oh, I'm going to grab this purple one and uh, give it a try. Oh, wow. Mmm. Wow. It almost had me fooled thinking it was a cupcake because it looks kind of like that, but it, it's certainly more dense and uh, sticky than a, a, you know, a normal uh, a cupcake would be. There is a definite sticky quality to it and there's a density to it, but it's not exceedingly dense. It has a very forgiving density to it. Interesting. Never had puto before. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, I'm going to try a yellow one, see if it's any different. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mmm. I can't really tell what flavor this yellow one is. It doesn't have the that little punch of ube flavor. I don't know what this yellow one is. Mmm. It tastes less sweet though than the the purple ube puto. It makes me wonder if puto is eaten by itself or is it supposed to accompany something else? I don't I don't know. You can leave me a comment in the comment section to let me know. But uh, oh, let me try this uh, kusinta. It is a ooh. It has a uh, circular f a shape to it, but it's flat, very flat on the top and on the bottom. I, I got some grated coconut that goes with it. And the young lady who helped me <laughs> inside uh, Gwenny's told me to sprinkle some coconut on top of the kusinta. But uh, let me just eat it uh, plain uh, first and I'll put uh, some coconut on the second one. <laughs> wow. It's very sticky, very dense and glutinous. Kind of kind of has a rubberiness about it. Wow. Okay, I'm going to pinch off some uh, uh, grated coconut from this uh, little condiment cup. Ooh. Here ooh, here it is. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's good. Yeah, and I think that really does help out the uh, the eating experience of this kusinta. That coconut flavor and that kind of grated coconut texture really adds a little bit uh, of complexity to it, and it makes it less uh, monotonous. Uh, if you know, that might be the best way to put it. It's a little bit more varied, and uh, it adds more flavor to it. This coconut. 
Wow, that's good. Well, after having all that stuff from Gwenny's, it confirms in my mind why they are the premier Filipino bakery in the Washington DC area. And in fact, uh, it confirms in my mind that they're just one of the best bakeries outright of any kind in the DC area. So I'm glad I visited finally because I've been meaning to go for a long time now. And I wanna thank you for watching and joining me today on this episode. Please leave a comment in the comment section and please give this video a thumbs up and uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. Take care for now. I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye-bye.